Now, um, I, I hope you guys like Zero Days, because this involves a Zero Day and Bash. <laughs> Suit Bash was a pwnable challenge at the Google CTF Finals 2019 and none of the teams solved it. The challenge description only says, yes, it's exactly what you think. There's a server to connect to via netcat and there's a file to download. It's a small patch file that you can apply to the Bash source to add new functionality. And who would be better to talk about this challenge other than the challenge author, Ian Putney. But before he tells us more about it, I want to quickly mention, you need to know what SUID, SUID or SETUID means. If you don't know that, please check out my binary exploitation playlist, specifically episode hex B, starting at around minute 345. So let's have a quick look at the challenge server. We connect with netcat and even though it doesn't look like it, we have a shell here. When we type ID, we see that our user is called user and has the user ID 1338. With bash i we can also get a bit nicer prompt. Let's look at the files with ls. And we see a flag file, a read flag as h shell script and the suid bash binary. And it's notable that all these files belong to the user flag haver. So we as user don't have the permission to read the flag. But there is suid bash, which is a tool for running setuid bash scripts and you can just pass in the script as an argument. And we have the get flag as h bash script, which has the set UID bit set. This script simply asks for a password, then calculates the SHA-256 hash of it and compares it to this hash. If your password is correct, you get the flag. Because this is a good CTF, you know that there is no guessing, bullshit, brute force, word list, crap involved. So you can assume that you don't have to touch this. But theoretically, if you had the password, then suit bash, so this modified version of bash, would execute this set UID script, which then runs as the flag have a user and thus can read the flag. So your goal is to somehow exploit suit bash or this get flag script to get the elevated privileges of the flag have a user and read the flag yourself. Now, if you would try to create your own script and just cut the flag, then obviously this wouldn't work. That would be too easy. So let's check out the code in the provided patch file. First, you can see it renames the real main function from the original bash and adds a new main. In there, it does a couple of things. For example, looks at the file permissions of the bash script to see if there is a set UID bit. And after some additional checks are passed, it prepares arguments, which are later passed to the original main. If you look at the prepared arguments, you can see that if your script is allowed to run with setuid permissions, then it sets the minus p flag. But if you are not allowed, it will not set minus p. So what is minus p? The man page for bash writes, if the shell is started with the effective user ID not equal to the real user ID, and the minus p option is not supplied, the effective user ID is set to the real user ID. So this means by default, bash will revert the actions of set UID and drop privileges back to the real user ID. But if the minus p option is supplied at invocation, the effective user ID is not reset. So this is basically the patch. If there is a set UID script and it passes some checks, it will execute real bash with minus p and for any other scripts, it will keep the default behavior of dropping the privileges. So how do you now exploit this? Well, no team solved it in the end. So obviously I couldn't solve this either. And the vulnerability here is very tricky. As Ian said at the beginning of the video, this involves a zero day in bash. But luckily, I had the privilege to sit down with Ian and hear the story behind this challenge. So let's listen, and with what we learn from him, we can then go on and solve it. The challenge was initially based on an actual binary that existed called Suid Perl. Okay. In Linux, you cannot set the SUID bit on uh, scripts, <laughs> or rather you can, but it doesn't work. Uh, and so with Perl, they produced this binary that would allow you to execute a set UID Perl script as root or whichever user owns it. 
However, uh, it had some vulnerabilities. One of them was on Linux, there are actually three user IDs. There is the effective user ID, which controls your permissions. There is the real user ID, which is not set from uh, set UID binaries, so that it knows what user you're coming from. And then there's the saved user ID, which exists only as a place where a UID can be put so that you can drop privileges and then still be able to come back to it later. And Suid Perl did not correctly set the saved UID. I have a question about the saved UID. Uh, isn't that like kind of ineffective because any process that would be taken over with drop privileges could just also take the saved or what makes it? So you, you bring up a good point there. <laughs> yes. Um, when Suid Perl wanted to uh, drop privileges to whatever user um, it was, uh, the script was owned by, it needed to set the effective user ID and the saved user ID, but it only set the effective, yeah. meaning the process could take the uh, saved UID and get back those privileges, and the saved UID was root, because Suid Perl was owned by root, and so now it was root. Okay, and so this challenge is basically implementing the same behavior just for bash scripts? Yes, that was actually initially the, the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I had written effectively a suid bash that did exactly that. But then, bash has this behavior where if you start it from a set UID context, or more formally where the effective user ID does not equal the real user ID, it will by default drop its privileges down to real. Mm -hmm. And this had the exact same bug where it does not correctly set the saved UID. Oh, really? Which means that it's possible for a bash script to recover its dropped privileges. Here's the thing, though. There is no bash built-in that allows you to call a set UID syscall. And if you ever fork a child process in exec, that child binary doesn't have this saved UID. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a way to make bash itself recover the privileges. Okay. And, and it turns out bash has the ability to load built-ins at runtime. I know of literally no legitimate use for this feature. The only time I've ever seen it used is in a uh, GitHub repo by Tavis Ormandy for doing exactly this call foreign function interface. It sounds actually like a doable challenge, but yeah, the, the patch itself doesn't have the vulnerability. The patch itself is just to make, uh, to facilitate the challenge, but the actual like bug is like somewhere completely else. So the patch, the code doesn't actually reveal it. Correct. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, makes sense. So yeah, let me check in with you uh, later in the CTF when a couple of teams have solved it and when I had a look at it as well, and then maybe we can talk about Maybe you hear even about some how some of the teams have solved it. That would be interesting. Spoiler alert, nobody solved it. All right. Okay. Thanks. OK, obviously we know the solution now, and we can try to solve it. You should now try it yourself. Maybe the CTF server is still up, or you can set it up locally. Here I use an Ubuntu VM with a vulnerable bash version. First, we need to target the user, so I create Alice. Then we make Alice the owner of the bash binary and set the set UID bit. Now we would imagine if we execute bash as a regular user, we should become Alice. But when we enter ID, we see that bash dropped the Alice privileges and we are just user. We can also see here the effect of minus P. If we do that and then execute ID, we see that bash doesn't drop the privileges and we have the effective user ID of Alice. But we are attacking the case without minus P. By the way, it's important to use this new user Alice for this and don't try to make it a root owned set UID. Ian told me that for historical backwards compatibility reasons, the set UID function has different behavior. When it's running as root, it sets all three UIDs. If it's not running as root, it sets just the effective UID. So the vulnerability exists only if it's running as not root. He said, there's a reason why he called this the world's least useful vulnerability. You can also create the test flag file as Alice and prevent others from reading it. You can use this to test if you got the Alice permissions. Now is your last chance to pause and try it yourself. Three, two, one, okay. So after this interview, I sat down for a while and tried to figure out the details. And Ian already mentioned the technical challenge here because you need bash itself to call the set UID syscall to recover the safe UID privileges. 
You can't create a C program and execute it because upon an exec, the save UID is lost. And he mentioned that Bash has this feature to load built-ins at runtime. And this is a way to get your own code executed inside of the Bash process. And this was actually the hardest part, to figure out how to create your own Bash built-ins in C. It's really difficult to Google for that. It took me quite a bit combing through GitHub and looking for examples until I figured out that it's very simple. Basically, the enable command in Bash allows you to load a shared library and it then attempts to call a function in it. And in a shared library, you can define a constructor which is executed upon loading it. So we basically just create a dynamic library with a constructor that calls set UID with the ID of the user we target. In the case of my Alice Ubuntu example, it would be 1001. And in the case of the challenge, flag haver has the UID 1339. Then you use GCC to compile this first into an object file and then into a shared object, a dynamic library. So let's try this. We execute bash again and we see that we can't read the flag and we clearly don't have Alice's permission. Now we load this dynamic library with an able-f and libpwn.so and ASD. You can see there is an error that bash and able try to find ASD underscore struct. That's stuff you would have to include if you would want to create an actual built-in and load it. But we don't care because our constructor was already executed and you can see it updated the effective user ID. When we now check ID, we see that we have the EUID from Alice. We recovered the drop privileges from the saved UID. And now we can read our test flag. Easy. Now we just need to reproduce this on the challenge server. And this is again a bit tricky because there's no proper editor like Vim, so you have to use this trick with cat to get the file content copied over. So here I create the library source code and you can see the call to set UID for the flag haver. Then we compile it with the two steps we already know to a shared library. Because Suit Bash executes shell scripts and doesn't give you a proper shell, we now need to create a script that simply loads the shared library with enabled minus F. And then it should be able to read the flag. Make it executable and then call Suit Bash with the script. Ready? Boom, there it is, it worked. Here's the flag. Zero days are the best days, CVE 2019-18276. And we get a small message from Ian. I'm pretty sure that if you combine world's least useful vulnerability with affecting every computer on the planet, those cancel out and you end up with just vulnerability. Right? That's how it works? <laughs> I like that. Also, what's old is new again. This challenge was inspired by CA 1996-12, Suet Pearl. But then after writing the challenge, I decided to check whether Bash's automatic privilege dropping feature has a similar issue. Turns out it does. I dug up this 1996 assert advisory document from Carnegie Mellon. Vulnerability in Suet Pearl. Original issue from June 1996. The Zert Coordination Center has received reports of a vulnerability in systems that contain the Suet Pearl program and that supports saved set user ID and saved set group ID. By exploiting this vulnerability, anyone with access to an account on such a system may gain root access. Fascinating. Also, you may have heard that John Hammond was also there. He should also upload some videos about the CTF and the event, so check out his channel. He also talked with Ian and I threw in a question because I wanted to know how this Bash vulnerability was discovered. Who found the uh, Ode in, in Bash? How was that discovered? Okay, um, <laughs> okay so, so, so I found the zero day in Bash for the, the Suid Bash vulnerability. So I made Suid Bash just like Suid Pearl. I made it do all the same things and have the same privilege dropping bug. But then I was like, well, Bash has that privilege dropping feature. What if it has the same vulnerability? And it did. Nice. Wow, you just ran accidentally into it. <laughs> you were you trip over my zero day. <laughs> yeah, you were thinking of introducing a vulnerability that was actually there. Yeah. Ac actually, at work, uh, a lot of the vulnerabilities I find are either I just stumble across something or I see something in some documentation and I'm like, that looks like something somebody could mess up. We'll I'm going to investigate and see if they did. Nice. That's super cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's just the core of, of research, right? You look at something, how could it be messed up? And then you go out and see if, it, if people mess it up. Indeed. By the way, 
This vulnerability has somewhat of an emotional component for me. Because when I started learning binary exploitation, I played things like exploit education, IO, over the wire, and so forth. And when you exploit a set UID binary and execute bash, the result would be drop privileges. It was very frustrating when I first ran into this because I didn't understand what was going on. Your exploit was successful, but somehow you still couldn't access the next level. And so it's funny to think back and realize that I could have used this vulnerability to recover the privilege in my shell and solve it after all. I wonder how many people feel the same way.